Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to show you how I throw and trim these pots for my hanging planters. I recently made these for the first time for my last wood firing and I'm going to be making some for my gas kiln as well as for the next wood firing as well as I'll probably get into making some hanging bird baths, some bird houses, all kinds of stuff. The idea of hanging these this way has really opened up some doors. So for today at least I'm going to throw, show you how I, not throw you, I'm not going to throw you, I'm going to show you how I throw the basic shape of this, how I trim it, and if I have time I'll show you how I hang these, uh, but probably in another video I'll show you the materials and how I wire these to hang, but for now we're going to do the throwing and trimming of these hanging planters, so let's go. All right, for this one I have uh, around three pounds of clay. It might be a little over. I didn't weigh it out. I just measured the length of the clay from my pug. So obviously you get the clay ball centered. I like to flatten it out a bit because what I'm gonna do is basically open up the center of the clay ball all the way down to the bat. And I wanna get the width of the whole clay ball to be about the width that I'm gonna want the opening inside which will eventually be the top obviously we're, uh, you probably figured out we're gonna throw this up cone it in and close it off and then shape it kind of like a uh, uh, just a closed in form but without a bottom so now that I have this uh, wide let's see how wide is this this is around seven almost eight inches wide I'm gonna poke down in the center all the way down to the bat and then I'm gonna start pushing out underneath the clay and raising it up kind of like if you've ever made a raised lid this is how you do that as well kind of helps to make sure you have some water in there I use a couple fingers because it's it takes a lot of pressure to push up up under that you definitely want to have some water as well as I try to push down to kind of clean off some of that excess clay off the bat as I'm doing this using my left hand to kind of steady my right hand as I'm pushing get that extra clay out and you want to push out to your uh, pretty close to that outside edge you don't want to go too far but you don't want to leave a lot of thickness there so now I've got it so that the bottom's probably a half to a three quarters inch thick and now I'm just gonna raise this I'm gonna start pulling I don't want to I don't want to open this way up because I'm gonna close this all the way back in at the end anyway so if I leave it kind of this beehive shape it's going to help me close it in but I want to start pulling because I don't want to leave all that thickness there you do need to leave a little bit of thickness especially in the top part of this because you are going to close it all the way off and if you pull this too thin it's going to be very difficult to close this all the way in if you get the same uh, kind of the same as making a uh, like a small neck vase if you pull all this clay in this top third or top half too thin it gets really hard to close that in the clay wants to buckle um, so uh, and you'll just have to figure out what shape you like best I figured out that I like a shape that kind of has like a uh, uh, what I call a crown molding it's which is going to be at the top like a little band of clay that has some decorative elements to it and then I like to come off of that and actually have the the belly of the the, the piece kind of come out a little bit and then back into that point um, I've talked to a few friends of mine about whether you should make these with holes in the bottom or not. Um, depending on the plant you're using and where you're hanging it, you know, that will make up whether you have a hole in the bottom or not. Uh, the last batch that I made, I made about half of them with holes in the bottom and half without. The one that I have that my friend Aaron made in the house, it does not have a hole in the bottom, but we just picked a, uh, uh, like an, an ivy type plant that didn't need a lot of water and even when you do water you don't have to add much you don't have to worry about the roots rotting because you're over watering all that kind of stuff so anyway so what I like to do now that I have this pulled and I have kind of a general shape I have just kind of a little bit of a belly there and then it just tapers in what I like to do is come up and clean clean up around the bottom another thing you can do is you can before you close this off you can take this 90 degree angle on a rib like this and go in and clean up around the inside of the bottom I'm not going to do it on this one because I've got it pretty clean with my finger there but before you close it in much you can go in there and clean up the inside of this bottom 
and and get that so you don't have you have less trimming to do later uh, but what I want to do is, is clean up around the bottom here and then I want to come up say however far I want that crown molding as I call it to be let's say I'm gonna come up about an inch maybe a little bit less and I want to just push in and I'm gonna separate that clay that's definitely not an inch that's more like half to three quarters but I want to just kind of separate some of that clay and make my little decorative foot on the on the bottom there so now I have this little spot there where that's going to eventually be the top of the, the hanging planter uh, and now I'm going to start shaping from here up and so now I want to go inside and I want to find that spot put my rib right on top of that spot and then I'm going to start pushing out against my rib and shaping this and I want like kind of like a nice belly there I don't want to go too far with that belly as far as height because that will make it that much harder to close in but one of the things that I realized I like the look of is when it's kind of flares at the at the base or at the top kind of comes in and then back out and then back in it kind of gives a really um, elegant look to the uh, to the planter so now I've got that bulbous part there formed now I want to clean the excess water out from the inside before I close this off And now I want to take this top part here. I'm going to add water there and just start closing this off. One good thing is even if you are going to leave a hole in the bottom, you can always cut that out later. One good thing is to actually close this all the way off. Trap air inside. That gives you a little bit of pressure on the inside so that you can do any decorate, decoration or shape that you want to after you close it off. So I like to go ahead and, and, and pinch that top in like this right here. I'm not going to close it all the way off first because I want to, now that I've pinched that in, it's gotten thicker, I want to pull that up. So I'm going to pull some of the extra clay out of that. That's also going to help me pinch it in again and close that off. And if you have extra clay when you're done, uh, you can either make a decorative uh, you know, bottom to it or you can just pinch that off, whatever you want to do. Don't worry about these I realized I don't have to make them thin I don't have to make them super light I don't have to you know worry about if I'm if I've got a little extra clay when I'm done I'm not making these you know uh, to a certain specs and and the uh, material that I bought to hang them with can surely hold way more weight than I actually have them made out of so like I said when I get that all the way in I'm gonna go ahead and pinch this all the way off and close that off and what I've done by doing that and I want to close this all the way off at the base. I've trapped air in there and now that trapped air allows me like if I want to smooth this shape up a little bit I don't have to have a hand on the inside because I've got the air in there that's pushing back against me now and so I can now take like a rubber rib that bottom curve is still set real nice but if I want to come to the part that's like from here to there and I want to curve that let's say in a little bit I can just push against that and the air inside is pushing back allowing me to kind of shape that without having a hand on the inside so I like to do that and then I also like to that's yeah, basically like a Hershey kiss uh, now I want to come and actually f create some decoration on this piece as well so I'm gonna uh, make me push in take the, the 90 degree angle of this rib and push down uh, to make a little a little line there and then I can use this rib as well if I want to take the, the point of it and just do some just put some grooves in it like that and then let's say I did want to make this one with a hole in the bottom after I finish all the decoration I'm doing all the, 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 the reason I need the air trapped in there I can come back later or come back when I'm done take my needle tool and then just trim out a little bit of a hole now you have to be very steady with this because obviously that's going to want to buckle a little bit on you but then if I just cut that hole in there and just come back and cut that off even like that And now I have a hole, a drain hole in the bottom of the planter. So whether you want to make it with drain holes or without, I found it best to just do that drain hole at the end. And now I have a, the beginning stages of a hanging planter. 
and I made these in a, in a couple different sizes and I plan on making some even larger. Uh, the small ones I made are, are pretty small, won't go any smaller than that most likely. And then like I said, I plan on doing some bird baths and bird houses as well along with the, the, the bird, uh, the uh, hanging planters. But now let's uh, go on to uh, trimming one of these. All right, I have some of these that I made yesterday that uh, I've cut free from the bat. Uh, these got a little stiffer than, than needed to before I pulled a wire under them, but they're actually perfect for trimming. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I trim these. Uh, I uh, needed a open mouth uh, uh, item that I could use as a chuck. The two bisque square chucks that I have down here were not big enough, so I found a planter that I had. I have my sticky bat, which helps the planter stay in place. So what I'm going to do is get this centered uh, on the sticky bat. And you can't really tap center on a sticky bat, so I'm just going to uh, hold my finger here until it gets basically in the center of the wheel. Now this planter might not be perfectly even around, but that's close enough. Uh, now in order to not scar up the outside of the hanging planter, I have some of my foam paper here that's normally in a sheet that's one foot by two foot, but I, I ripped off some pieces of this so that I could lay these here as a cushion. So I'm going to do three of those, leave, a center, uh, leave the center open so that I can now take the hanging planter, turn it upside down, put that knob right down in the center, and then nestle that, uh, or nest that, I guess, right into that foam paper. And then I just eyeball this as far as getting it level because it's in the center of the wheel. So I kind of lean down next to it and I get my eye, eye level to where it's, uh, where I can see it going up and down, where it gets to a high spot. I just then shift that uh, away from me or push it down to try, basically help level this. Uh, now because they were a bit stiff when I pulled a wire under them, I can see a little unevenness where the wire was pulled underneath them, so I'll have to trim that out of it uh, the best I can. I think I made that worse there. Uh, let's see, there's the high spot. All right, that's pretty close there. Now, another thing I like to do in order to keep this level, I take one of my large trimming spinners, I put it down inside uh, so that I can apply some down pressure with my left hand in the center of that while I'm trimming this. That will keep this from shifting out of, uh, out of level with the, with the chuck that it's sitting in. And then I'm using my, my half moon uh, trimming tool from uh, Diamond Core Tools which I need to buy some new pieces because that one's about to wear through. I've worn through two or three of these already and I just need to order some more. So then I take that and then I'm just going to trim, uh, basically trying to trim this rounded and get some of that thickness out of there as well because of when I threw those obviously there was some clay sitting inside um, that I had to, uh, I'll have to come back and trim off now. So. I just start out by, by trimming the outside. I like to put some down pressure on this, but I still like to kind of bring my thumb up out of the inside to kind of uh, create a steadiness with my right hand. So I like to kind of touch these two together by just having my thumb from my left hand touching my right hand in one form or another. And so doing a little bit of trimming there on the outside. Most of it is done on the inside, but now uh, just going to start trimming on the inside and like I said these these are a little tricky at times because you're you don't have much steadiness uh, don't have much things to prop against to trim uh, but that's why I use my left hand touching my right hand to give me a little bit of a, a kind of a steady uh, a stabilization with that hand touching with my two hands touching each other so I want to trim some of that extra thickness out and then Basically just round the top of this is what I want to do to give me a nice cool. I don't mind this being thick on top, uh, but I just want to have it nice and rounded on top so that um, it just looks good while it's hanging. Now these are made for my gas kiln. The clay these are made out of is for my gas kiln, so these are just going to be unglazed on this rim part here and the rest of the piece will be glazed, at least on the outside. And then uh, if I want to, I can take uh, a sponge and smooth that up. And there we go. 
So now, of course, most of my trimmings went inside. Um, I like to just pick this up, kind of lean it to one side. I don't want all those trimmings falling down into that little hole, so I like to kind of lean this to one side, rake them all over, and then all the trimmings have gone to that one side, and then you can just dump this in your slip bucket, or in my case, I'm just going to dump it in my water bucket here that I will uh, eventually empty and get the slip out of the bottom. So there's one trimmed, and then I'll come back in a little bit when this stiffens up some more and drill some holes. I'll use my trimming spinner to get three uh, equidistant hole uh, spots and, and drill the holes in to then wire it up later. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. And if it did, feel free to leave a like and a comment if you have any questions. And I really hope you have a great day. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.